The Midweek Metal and Horror Meltdown Show is an online radio show and podcast that focuses on the newest and best independent metal acts, horror filmmakers, and movies from around the world. This is an hour-long show that showcases music from some of the best independent metal bands with interviews, latest releases, touring news, and much more. We also do a weekly independent horror movie segment with a horror movie review. We have special guest interviews from horror filmmakers, authors, and industry insiders. The Meltdown is broadcast live every Wednesday from 11 to 12 Eastern Time, directly following my show, Nocturnal Addiction. Hello and welcome to The Meltdown. So what do we got going on tonight? What are we getting into first, my dear? Well, we have a little bit of Today in Rock. We can get into that and rock and movies and all that good stuff and birthdays. Our filmmaker should be calling in. Hello, caller. I recognize this area code. Yeah, this is uh, my, this is uh, Michael Gary Peterson. Hello, hey, Michael. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing Pretty awesome. good. So, everybody, this is uh, Michael Peterson. He uh, is the writer, director, and uh, actor too, right, Michael? Uh, actually, I'm just the um, the writer, director, and creator. Um, the only acting that I do is just like little bits of cameos, like Alfred Hitchcock. I gotcha. I gotcha. Now, cool. the name of your project, uh, let it, let's start, let everybody know, is the um, the last uh, broadcast series, right? Or is it, or is that just the sub name? And there's a different name. Uh, well, um, if you watch the series, um, it's entitled "The Last Broadcast," and each episode is actually divided into, into chapters. Like, um, hmm. uh, for example. Um, Chapter 1, which was called uh, The Last Broadcast, Chapter 1, Through the Eyes of Others, and then the recent one that was just, that was just released this past this previous January was uh, Chapter 2, Pandora's Dawn, and later on uh, this summer, uh, Chapter 3, The Origins of Iris, will be uh, hitting the big screens. So each, awesome. um, so, so each episode is divided by um, uh, like an hour-long you know, chapter. It's pretty much like if you pick up a... Um, you know, a great novel, and then you skim through it, and you, there's chapters one, two, three, and each uh, chapter is a different segment in the story. No, oh, very cool. Now, is this your first four-way into uh, into filmmaking, or something you've been doing for a while, or how did this um, all come I, about, Michael? Well, um, I've been um, really into film ever since I was seven years old. Uh, ever since my uh, father showed me. Uh, uh, the first Back to the Future film, I, my my life has completely <laughs> just changed after that, and that was like um, like my all time favorite childhood movie. And then eventually, when I got older, I started getting into like uh, the Grindhouse flicks, uh, the old Hammer pictures, uh, the old Universal movie monsters, and a lot of the oh, modern uh, horror Hammer. films that are coming up. Oh yeah, I do too. And um, uh, it was basically it all originated when I was around seven, when I was around seven or six years old. Ever since I learned how to pick up my uh, my dad's uh, old Panasonic VHS camcorder. If you remember those big bulky things from back in the '80s, I picked that up and then tinkered with them for a, pick, pick those up and tinker with them for just for a little bit. And then eventually, I just started to, um, you know, setting up shots and you know, following you know a formality of actually telling a uh, telling a narrative. And I wasn't really good at it when I was younger because I really didn't know anything. I didn't you know know what I was doing or anything. And then eventually, when I <clears throat> got to high school I started becoming really interested in um, you know theater and drama and then eventually um, you know while I was in drama club at my old high school which is uh, located in Melvindale uh, which is where I grew up um, I started um, just directing ideas for some you know for some movies and then eventually I finally found my calling in life so I'm just like you know what this is what I want to do when I get out of high school I want to be um, uh, a, a screenwriter, a director, and possibly a producer. And um, so right. I, so I, you know, started off by just doing like you know, um, PSA videos for like the morning for like the morning announcements and everything. And eventually that led over to me um, um, getting myself a blue collar job, working around the clock, forty hours a week, sometimes even fifty hours a week, just to get a good paycheck. And then I was able to buy my own equipment. And then finally, um, after I graduated in 2003, it was another uh, another three long years of saving up money, purchasing equipment, and then eventually I launched uh, Dark Fortress Pictures, which is my production company, and um, we started uh, shooting some uh, short films. And uh, the last broadcast film series is not my first um, venture into filmmaking. I've actually been 
doing short films, and I have one feature underneath my belt that I've been doing since... I've been, basically, I've been doing this professionally on my own, you know, sweat and tears and blood and my own dollars <laughs> since 2006. I gotcha. No, I gotcha. Yeah, I no, I first have to... Full length, the feature, did you just say Anamorphia? Anamorphia? Yes, that was... Uh, Anamorphia is um, my long overdue feature that is... Um, pretty much been in post-production since uh, the summer of 2008. And um, I, I haven't forgotten about it or anything. It's just that, um, you know, with, with, when you're doing this independently, you know, life tends to get in your way. And I lost right. my job. At the, I, I, lost, I lost my job at the machine shop that I was working at. And then eventually I decided to go back to school to get my, to further my education. And I, you know, got the associate's degree in telecommunications and film and television. And now here... I'm at, and now I'm at Eastern in Ypsilanti, Michigan, uh, receiving my bachelor's degree in the same field. All right, yeah. Oh, Ipsy, Ipsy's a fun town, and so Eastern's a good school. I uh, I grew up in Metro Detroit uh, probably many, many years before you did, but, um, yeah, uh, you know, nobody parties like <laughs> the West Side, right? Nobody parties <laughs> like the West Side. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not really too much of a party or anything. I'm actually kind of a... Um, too busy a working, busy making uh, movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm too I'm, I'm too busy working, and I wasn't I mean, you know I'm not really too much of a partier. I mean, I'll socialize. I'm a big social butterfly though, but I'm not mm-hmm. really too. I, I I don't go way out of my way just to get plastered and just get enamored and be you know completely rambunctious and stupid. So well, and that's that, that, that's good to hear a Michiganian say that because um, that ain't the norm, man. That ain't the norm. Let me tell you, <laughs> people put well, it I mean, away in Michigan like nobody's business. But I'm glad. Right. And, you know, it shows because you actually are getting stuff done and getting things accomplished. And I watched uh, a little bit of, uh, well, a smattering of of all the different uh, uh, stuff that was on YouTube. And um, good work, man. Now, so our listeners know this. I mean, I guess I I hate to say, you know, oh, it's a zombie flick. um, It's a zombie series, I should. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really more about, I mean, you really have some, some good drama between the characters and whatnot yeah. uh the film set up i mean the shot setups are just out of this world i, I you know, let me ask you this uh, is it hard to find locale to shoot around there because it does it it to me being from southern michigan i'm like okay i can i rec- it looks like southern michigan almost you know what i mean um well um, but I, well basically the locations um it, it's just like any other great writer i mean the you know, just the location is pretty much based on, you know, where you've been at as a person. And usually right, I try you to put uh, your own. I yeah. See. I usually, I usually try to based um, any scene out of any of my films uh, based on locations that I've either been to, or it just, you know, comes, you know, right off my, uh, my, my synapse, you know, the synapse is firing my brain. It's but like, it's okay, I want, I, I want, I want you to write this location down and everything. And right. pretty much. Um, and then when, with the creative, in the creative process, when I create a location, I pretty much, you know, map it out in the script. It's like, okay, now where do I find this location at? And then sometimes it takes um, a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. And then sometimes someone will say, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I actually have a really good, talented cast and crew that are extremely dedicated, even though we're, you know, we're not doing this for any money or anything. I mean, this is all right. based on based on sheer passion. I mean, we, 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 we're not in it for the money or anything. We're in it just because... You know, we love this medium. It's a great way to express yourself, and and it's and it's just a big, you know, it's a, well, it's you a know, really big thing for that's me. That's a great attitude to have because you know what, the money will come, man. The money will come, um, mm-hmm. and and that's that's cool. And you know, the cool thing is the money will come, and you'll have all the you'll say, wow, I've got all this money to to use, uh, to you know, and I can get this camera, do this effect, or blah blah blah. But the cool thing is, is you'll know how to do everything without that money and without those effects and without that cool kit. You know what I mean? Um, right. And I, mean, I, pr- I, mean, I mean, pretty much when I develop an idea, I try to make it simple as possible because, um, you know, I, I, I don't have, um, you know, paycheck after paycheck coming in or anything. I mean, I'm actually a writer at my um, at uh, the college that I go to here at Eastern. I'm, I, actually, I actually have my own section and uh, the the Eastern Echo, I I write uh, film reviews. Actually, I do like a, um, awesome. a film critique and, a, and an analysis. And I'm also one of their photographers too. So that's pretty much how I make uh, extra money. And also, I um, provide provide my post production and production services because I've had 
<clears throat> numerous experiences, you know, since I started, right. since I established myself in 2006. So, you know, either way, I mean, if I'm not working on any of my personal projects, I mean, I'm still finding ways to, to get paid in my field of work because, you know, I just love every single moment of it. I mean, if, right. if, I, if, I'm, hold, if I'm holding the boom, the boom mic, or even operating the crane arm to make the camera go 10 feet or 20 feet in the air, I'm extremely happy. <laughs> that's excellent well you know that's cool man and that's cool and i'm glad to see you out there doing it and i tell you we live in the age now where people are doing this people are taking taking the the reins and 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 creating stuff creating film creating music do, all this stuff where they're not relying on you know and they're just doing it and putting it to the the consumer directly the viewer the uh the the i hate to use the word consumer but the um uh, you know the fan, uh, the, the viewer, uh, yeah. and it's you know, and it's it's great. People are making deals with Hulu and stuff. It's it's you mm -hmm. know, I know somebody you know that has a whole series through Hulu. I, who would have thought that? He's like, yeah. He goes, why would I waste my time with you know NBC or somebody when I can just go direct and you know right. not cut up that and, pie? And, well, the, well, the um, the medium is always constantly changing. I mean, with the way that technology is. I mean, I remember way back then, what before the internet even existed. I mean, you would have to go to the theater and see the movie, and then eventually you had to wait like several months for it to either hit, you know, come out on laserdisc or VHS. You know, those are the two main um, way, uh, two two main uh, mediums right. of uh, of home entertainment. Yeah, laserdisc didn't even really last that long. <laughs> no, they only. Oh, I actually still have my old laserdisc player and everything. I, uh, oh my, my dad, god, I'm so jealous. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, my 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 dad's a complete uh, technology nut and everything, and he pretty much was the first person that I knew that I knew personally that had um, like the original beta system and eventually laserdisc, <laughs> and now it's and now it's uh, oh, wow. and, and now it's DVD and everything. And now yeah. since I'm kind of I'm kind of like heir to the throne from my family side, I've actually kind of picked up on. You know, being the big tech geek myself and everything, and now I'm, I'm actually the only person in my entire in my family that has a Blu-ray player, and I'm just been, been spoiled with blu ray <laughs> Well, that's excellent. Hey guys, we're up against it, Michael. So much for being on the show. You know, we're going to be doing a, a a longer show here in the future, um, and when I say the future, I don't mean months from now. Trust me, it'll be a lot quicker than that. Um, I want to have you back on, but I want everybody, how can they tune in to, you and to see your shows? How do we go about this? I know you're going to be at the, uh, the Motor City uh, Horror, Con or what is it, the Motor City, um, oh, Tammy, gonna, uh, I, I forget her name. I, I, uh, I'm going to be at, um, this weekend, I'm going to be at, the, um, at, the, at Penguin Con. I'm going to okay. be promoting, uh, I'm going to be promoting TLB. Actually, last, uh, the previous weekend, I was at, um, Actually, not the previous weekend. Two week, uh, about a week and a half ago, I was at uh, I was out in Flint promoting um, the TLB series at the Flint Comic Con, and this oh, weekend okay. I'm going to be this weekend I'm going to be at uh, Penguin Con promoting, and then eventually that's going to be pretty much uh, it for conventions right now until um, you know you know some of the you know I've submitted checks right. to to, I, to to other um, film festivals and hopefully they'll get picked up, and then as soon as they get picked up in their film festivals i'll be um coming in and you know promoting the hell out of it and trying to get out trying to get the word around and everything because i mean if, if there's if there's anything that i've got like the biggest criticism for for the series is that it's i mean from what you said before it's not your typical zombie flick i mean it's a lot it's a lot more in depth i mean i've been developing this idea for five long years and i just didn't want to do something that was a typical zombie um a zombie story i wanted to take right. something that, that that happened in our society and try to reflect and then try to populate it with the uh, with you know the zombies as the classic antagonists and everything. But really, it kind of follows along the line of my favorite show, The Walking Dead, where it's more of the people you have to fear rather oh. than the actual zombies itself. You are well, see, and that's what so many people don't get about the the Walking Dead show. Yes. When they say nope. when they titled it, they ain't talking about the zombies, man. They ain't talking about the zombies, aren't <laughs> the Walking Dead? It's the people, you know. It's, yeah. the, um, it's, the, it's, it's the people when they're when they're put in a, in a tight situation where they have to survive, and it's more or less them trying to survive each other rather than the actual threat that's wandering around out there in the shadows. Exactly. 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 Okay. Well, hey, Michael, thank you so much for calling in, and we apologize for the uh, delay and all that. We're gonna have you on back real, real soon, 
Uh, so don't be surprised when we start uh, calling you and bugging you and all this and that. Everybody, we're going to have uh, show links up for uh, uh, Michael's uh, uh, Facebook pages, websites, all of that. And um, on our show page, look for it tonight after the show's over. I'm going to throw up a couple of uh, the trailers that are on YouTube uh, because it's really cool stuff, man. Really cool stuff. Michael, yeah, thanks thank so much. much for thank calling you. in. Uh, th- thank, thank you guys for having me out there. Yeah, you, you have a good night. You, you both have a good night, too. Okay. okay Ciao. Talk to you guys then. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. I like him. 